it's okay. All right, so welcome to Safe and Effective Use of Essential Oils. Um, if you don't know me, if we haven't met, I am Holly of Renewal Fitness Coaching. I am a certified personal trainer, certified group fitness instructor, um, certified holistic nutritionist, and a doTERRA wellness advocate. And this class is going to be kind of a short, brief um, class, just giving you an introduction to how you can use essential oils safely and how to also use them effectively, because there's so many different ways you can use them. So this will be kind of an introduction to that. So if you're already a little bit familiar with essential oils, but maybe you don't know all the ways to use them, um, or you're kind of just getting introduced to them, this will be a great class for you. Okay, so to start out, it's very important to remember the power of essential oils. So essential oils are highly concentrated and potent. Now, if you don't already fully understand essential oils, um, then I would love for you to join me for one of my intro classes to essential oils. Um, and I'll get in later to um, about how you can reach out to me to get on that list to be notified of those classes where I go into all of that explanation. So I'm not gonna go into those details here, um, but as I talk about in that class, oils are very potent and concentrated. They are about 50 to 70% more powerful than herbs. Um, so it's really good to get things like oregano and thyme and cilantro and all these herbs into your diet for varying reasons, but it's hard to get them in the quantities that you need for them to fully benefit you. That's what I love about essential oils is that you're able to concentrate things like herbs and flowers and all these plants that God has given us into these nice little bottles um, just like this, of this very powerful essential oil that you can bring into your home. So for example, one drop of peppermint essential oil is equal to about 28 cups of tea. Um, so it's really cool. It's a great way to get the benefit with such a small dose of something, but it also means that it's very powerful. So it's really important to remember that because essential oils are not something um, that you should use a ton of. They are very powerful and you have to remember that. They're just like medicine. Um, so just like you wouldn't take 10 Tylenol, you know, you should take one, two, maybe three. It, you're not going to benefit by taking 10. Um, so it's the same with oils. You want to take the minimum effective dose, which we'll get into more a little bit later. You don't need to use a ton of them. Um, they come in these small bottles for a reason. You don't need a ton. It should take you a while to get through these. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay, so we're going to talk about the main uses of how to use essential oils, um, some of the methods, and then some of the safety protocols. So aromatically, this is the most common way to use essential oils. This is basically you're just inhaling the smell of the oil. So the most common way to do this is with a diffuser, which is pictured here. Um, you can also do it by dropping some oil in your hand, rubbing your hands together, cupping them over your face and breathing it in. That's a very simple, cheap, easy way to get aromatic benefit. Um, you can also smell them straight out of the bottle. So if you just want a clean, easy way, just take off the cap, have it right under your nose and smell it like that. Um, you can also add them to spray bottles. You can do a facial steam where you put some oil in hot water, put a towel over your head um, and let the steam come up to your face. So you get the aromatic benefit that way as well as it's good for your skin, good for respiration. You can add a couple drops in your shower, which is kind of nice to create sort of a spa-like environment. I like to do this with eucalyptus sometimes when maybe I need some help opening up respiratory passageways and my nose. Um, there's also jewelry that you can use. So there are bracelets, scarves, different things that you can wear that you would put a couple of the drops of the oil onto, and then you have it with you all day to smell, which is great if your skin's a little bit more sensitive and you don't want to put it on your skin. Um, or you don't want to put oils into an entire room. Like if you're working in an office, that's a great way to wear jewelry or to smell straight from a bottle when you can't diffuse for everyone around you, but you want to have the aromatic benefit. So a couple of protocols for aromatic use of oils, primarily with the diffuser, um, is you want to do probably about four to 10 drops of an oil, depending on your diffuser. So I know that's kind of a large range, um, but it depends on the diffuser. Some only hold a little bit of water, some hold a lot, and some oils are really strong in their scent and some are a lot lighter. So it kind of takes some experimenting to figure out what works for you, but um, typically you're, you may not need a full 10 drops of oil. Um, some oils are really potent at two drops. And again, if you're using a small diffuser, you're only gonna use a couple of drops at a time. So feel free to experiment this. With this, there's not really any way that you're going to necessarily harm yourself. Um, you just kind of need to play with the right ratios of what you feel like gives you the benefit you're looking for and how much of that smell that you like to have in your room. 
Um, general runtime with diffusion is about one to two hours. It's really not ideal to be running your diffuser all day long. And while many diffusers will do this, <clears throat> um, it's not necessary and it may even become overwhelming. Sometimes the smells um, can be a little bit too much, actually, if you run it for too long. And at some point your body becomes sensitive insensitive, desensitized to the smell as well. So you, after you're about a couple of hours, you're probably not even noticing the smell anymore. So it's better to run your diffuser for maybe an hour or two and then take a break. Another thing you can use is with a lot of diffusers, they will have a setting on them where maybe it runs for five minutes and then it takes a break for five minutes or one minute. It does different intervals. So that's a nice way to get it continually going in your air without overwhelming. Um, so best to just try a little bit at a time. The molecules from the oils can hang in the air for like up to six hours. Um, so you don't need to be running it all day long. And this helps you to save your oils and make them last longer as well. Um, and then when it comes to blending and what oils to put in your diffuser, uh, you can't really mess it up. You're not going to harm yourself by putting two different oils together that maybe don't smell great together, or whatever. That's the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna combine a couple and you don't like the smell of it, but there's really no wrong. Feel free to experiment with um, different blends and what you like. There are different ways of blending that maybe are going to help you get to a certain goal, um, but that's a whole other class <clears throat> that I can do at another time on kind of blending and some different oils that smell good together. But if you're in doubt, Google is great for just figuring out what oils go well together. Um, okay, so topical is the next popular use of oils. Topical use is you're putting it directly on your body. Um, so some ways that you can do this are putting it directly on the area of concern. So for instance, if you maybe have head tension, you can put some peppermint oil or frankincense right along your temples, the back of your neck, behind your ears, and that can help relieve some tension. Um, similarly, maybe you have some temporary knee pain um, and you can rub the oil straight on that area to help reduce pain and inflammation. Um, the bottoms of the feet are a great way to put oils on because they have big pores, which helps the oils to absorb better and faster. Um, and this is also good if it's maybe an oil that you don't love the scent of, you can put it on your feet, put some socks on, and then you're not smelling the oil so much. And that's a really safe, a generally safe way to put oils. Um, so that can be good for kids and babies as well. Roller bottles is one of my favorite ways to use essential oils. Roller bottles look kind of like, well, they look just like this, um, that have a little roller top on there. And then basically you just fill it with oil. So these are pre-diluted. You can either buy pre-diluted bottles like this from doTERRA, um, or you can make them at home yourself. You just put a few drops of oil and then coconut oil on top or any carrier oil, which we'll get into in the next slide. Um, and then that's a really easy, convenient way to just rub it on your wrist, your temples, anywhere you need the oil. And then it's really clean. You're not getting your hands all messy. Um, and speaking of messy, there is a messier way you can do it where if you don't have the roller bottle, you can simply put a few drops of a carrier oil in your hand, take your essential oil, put a couple of drops, mix it like that, and then rub it on whatever area you want to put the oils. So really quick and simple ways where you don't really need any special materials. Another thing you can do is to put them in the bath. <clears throat> so ideally you want to add them to Epsom salts or to a carrier oil and then put them into the bath. This is going to help them to absorb better, mix better with the water and absorb better into your body <clears throat> just because the oil and water don't mix super well and the oils are volatile. So they evaporate very quickly. If you put them in with salt or oil, they will last longer. And again, absorb into your body better for a better effect. Um, there's also massage. You can go to places that do massage with oils. You can do it yourself. Um, any pulse points are a good, great place to put essential oils. So behind the ears, on the wrist, your ankles. Um, there's also reflexology. So if you're familiar with the reflexology chart, um, on the bottom of your feet, there's all these different points where some maybe reach your um, stomach, some reach your uh, armpit, some reach your head, some reach your kidneys. And so you can kind of massage the oil onto your foot according to the reflexology chart. And again, you can Google that and find that. There's also some books that I'll share with you at the end that have that. Um, and then you can always mix them with lotions or body oils. So it's a great way to get a naturally nice scented body lotion or oil without the synthetic and toxic fragrances that come in most uh, body lotions. So you can add your own essential oil into any lotion or body oil. And that's a great way to deliver it to you as well. Um, especially if you don't want a lot of oil on your body, mixing it with lotion will work too as a good carrier. Okay, so let's talk about dilution rates and how 
um, to dilute essential oils because when, when you're using essential oils topically, you should almost always dilute them. So the safest way is to dilute oils. There are some oils that can go directly on your skin. They don't have to be diluted, but some of this is going to depend on you and your skin sensitivity and what works for you. So I would say always dilute first. And then if you're fine and you don't have any skin issues, you can try it neat, which is basically where it's not diluted. But diluting um, is actually going to, because you're putting it in with the oil, it's actually going to help um, absorb into your body a little bit better and then make the oils last longer. If you're constantly putting a drop in your hand or putting it wherever on your body, you're going to go through these bottles much quicker than if you make a roller bottle like this and have all this oil in there, it's going to make it last a lot longer. And it just makes it go on better. It also creates a barrier between your skin um, to, uh, to help um, avoid any skin sensitivities, rashes, bad reactions. So with these rollers, <clears throat> this dilution guide that I'm showing you right now, this is how you would dilute according to a 10 mil bottle. And that's what this is. This is 10 milliliters. Um, so it's about two teaspoons of oil. And so if you were to put in this bottle about tea two, two teaspoons of a carrier oil, and the carrier oils you can see on the side, there are more than this, but these are some of the common ones. They're a little bit lighter, they're not too greasy, and they work well. Fractionated coconut oil, almond oil, grapeseed oil. There's many more, but those are some great ones to try. <clears throat> um, so if you were to put about two teaspoons in here, then this guide right here will tell you about how many drops of your essential oil that you want to add. So it kind of depends on your age. Um, that's generally how this works. So for babies and children, for, so basically for anyone under one year old, you want to stick to about a half to a 2% dilution rate. So you want to keep it really low. So that's two drops of oil in this entire thing to keep it really diluted to make sure that it's safe, but still effective for little ones. Um, and then for children from about one to five years, you can use a slightly bigger dilution rate, two to 5%. Um, so that's anywhere from four to 10 drops in one of these. Um, and again, you don't have to use the bottle. If you want to put a teaspoon in your hand or in a container and mix the oil and apply it with your hands, that's fine too. Um, <clears throat> and then for anyone above about six years old, you can use anywhere from a five to a 25% dilution rate. Now 25 is kind of high. That's not what you'd normally do. That's 50 drops. That's going to be more for like your infrequent use of maybe a a sickness or a something that's kind of a temporary concern that you're trying to get rid of. But for your daily use of oils, you kind of want to stick in like the five, five to seven percent dilution rate generally to play it safe. And again, you can experiment with this. So start with five percent, like if you're doing it for yourself, um, say you're trying to use it for some temporary pain and you put 10 drops in here and it doesn't seem to be working then you might wanna try 11 drops or 12 drops or 13 drops. Add a few more and see if that helps at all. Um, but for the most part, you typically don't wanna go past even 10%, uh, I would say, um, except for those rare occasions. <clears throat> um, so a couple other safety rules with using these. Um, like I said, kind of test it on your skin before. It's good to dilute first and maybe test a little patch of skin that's not too sensitive. Maybe put it on your feet. If you react fine, then great. You might be able to use a larger dose um, or use the oil neat. Um, and always use the smallest effective dose. So kind of like I said with Tylenol before, if two Tylenol is working for you, why would you take five? So same with oil. If if 10 drops in here is working great for you, don't think you need to act, add 20 and it's going to do any better. You want to use the smallest effective dose um, to stay safe and healthy. Um, don't, uh, and then along those lines too, as I was saying, if maybe 10 drops don't work, another thing you might try is maybe it's fine, but you need to apply it a few more times. Um, so give it about 20 minutes because it takes about that long to get through your whole body, get into the cells and start working. If after 20 minutes, you're not really feeling anything, go ahead and apply it again. And then you might need to apply it one more time about 20 minutes later. So sometimes the more frequent application is going to give you those desired results you're looking for without having to add a bunch more oils. Um, <clears throat> and then don't ever put oils in your ears, your nose, or your eyes. These are very sensitive places. You don't want to put oils in them. If you do get oils in those areas, use a carrier oil to get rid of it, to wipe it off or wipe it out. Don't use water. That's just going to make it worse. Um, and then if you're using citrus oils, 
<clears throat> um, you want to avoid the sun. So if you're putting, uh, say, some blend that has lemon or bergamot or something like that in it, and you have it on your skin, you want to avoid the sun for up to 12 hours because those citrus oils um, make you more photosensitive. So you're more likely to get a sunburn. And then there's some oils you don't ever want to put on your skin neat. Um, some of those are listed here. These are kind of the primary ones. would be oregano, thyme, clove, cinnamon, and cassia. So these are like spicier, hotter oils that if you put on your skin, you'll probably have a pretty harsh reaction to. Um, so these are ones you always want to dilute. You can also take them internally, which we'll talk about next. Um, and there are some other ones you need to be careful with. So just before you put anything directly on your skin, make sure you research the oil. And if you're using doTERRA essential oils, you can go to the website and every bottle will have um, kind of a little key code that, ex that says an A or a T or I, like it'll kind of explain, can you use this aromatically, topically, internally? It'll let you know. And with doTERRA essential oils, if you can see this, they have supplement facts on the back. So if the supplement facts are on there, it means that you can take it internally. If they don't have that, it means it is not intended for internal use. So that's a really easy way to know if you can use this internally. And then just, you can always check the website too um, to double check on how to use the oil. Okay, internally is our last way. I'm sorry, let me take a drink real quick. Okay, so internal use is the last primary way to use essential oils. This would be things like you can put them in food or baked goods. You can put them into like a tablespoon of honey. You can add it to your water or tea. You can put a drop directly underneath your tongue or you can put them in some empty veggie capsules. So you can buy your own little capsules, add your drops in there and take them internally. So I like that for things like thyme and oregano. And maybe you're trying to fight off a sickness, but you don't wanna like, I don't wanna put those in my water. They taste gross, I don't want that. So the capsule makes it really easy. Um, and for adding to food and baked goods and tea and things like that, what you might want to do is take a little toothpick and just kind of stick it into the top of the bottle and then swirl that around in the food because sometimes even one drop in food or it's something like tea is too much. Um, so you might just want a little dab of it and then you can put that in there. But for a lot of them um, with water, you can put one or two drops in about four to eight ounces of water. Um, that's safe and it's, it's effective and um, the ones that are intended for internal use um, typically taste okay. <laughs> um, just, you know, you can kind of go by smell and um, again, research on the website. So a couple of safety rules with this. So internal use of oils is a little bit controversial. Some people just generally don't believe that you should use them, but some of that is based on the quality and purity of oils. So when I'm recommending internal use, this is for doTERRA essentials only. Um, so this is not for your $5 bottle on Amazon. This is not for the thing you find at Target. Um, this is for doTERRA oils because they have a such a high purity and potency that you can use them safely. Um, they go through rigorous testing to make sure that these are safe. So don't use other brands unless they specifically say that you can use them internally. And a lot will say that they're not intended for internal use. Um, if you're putting oils in your water, don't use plastic because the oils can leach out some of the plastic from the cup. Make sure that you use stain, uh, stainless steel or glass only. Um, and then again, don't take ones that aren't intended for internal use. If you aren't clear that they're intended for internal use, then don't take them. Um, and again, just take this if you feel comfortable with it. You don't have to take them internally. You can get tons of benefits topically and aromatically. Um, so some people don't like to do this and that's totally fine. It's totally up to you and what you feel comfortable with. Um, these can generally, though, be used to help to relieve digestive upset, support your immune system, support cellular health, add flavoring to water, and just give you kind of a little bit more potent dose. Okay, so a couple other safety considerations um, to have in mind. Um, you want to always store your oils away from sunlight and in dark bottles. So you'll notice that most oils are going to come in something dark, like an amber color or a blue bottle. So these help to protect the oils from damage from sunlight. Um, some oils are okay in clear bottles, um, but generally you want to keep them away from any direct sun. And I like to put everything in dark bottles just to be safe. I just don't put them in clear bottles. Some people do, but to me, that's just the safest way to do it. Um, with your diffuser, make sure that you clean it regularly, um, probably about once a week, if not every few uses. Um, if you let it go too long, the oil start to build up, gunk starts to build up in there, it's not gonna work as well. It might start to smell a little bit weird. So make sure that you are cleaning it out. 
use natural products, kind of like vinegar, like vinegar and water. You can just kind of wipe around in there. Make sure you wipe the center. There's usually a little center where the oil, uh, where the water comes out of. Make sure you get that all clean because that's where things tend to settle into. Um, and then just keep in mind that not, not all oils work for everyone. Um, so for instance, lavender is generally known as a relaxing, calming oil, helps you to go to sleep but some people actually find it energizing. So if one oil isn't working for the concern that you have, try another one. There are a lot of oils that have similar benefits. And so one might work a lot better for you than another. So experiment, try different things, try blends and see what works best for you. Um, if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, being treated for certain medical conditions, things like blood clotting, high blood pressure, cancer, things like that, or any other special conditions, make sure that you check with your doctor first um, and check with um, research. Look in books, look online, research oils before you use them, um, just to make sure that there's not going to be any contraindications. So um, like for instance, sometimes peppermint can have an effect on a woman's um, milk flow when she's breastfeeding. So it doesn't happen with all women, it happens with some. So you might just need to check. There's some oils that may, um, similarly some cause uh, muscle contractions. And so that's not good if you're pregnant. So you just need to research oils if you're in under in any kind of special consideration category. Um, <clears throat> always research them, look them up before you use them just to know what they do, make sure they're safe. And then also it's not listed here, but um, for pets, <clears throat> some oils are not good to use on or around pets. And it kind of depends on the pet you have, the breed you have, and the oils we're talking about. Um, I'm not going to go into depth in that here. That's kind of a whole other class, but I do have resources for that if you'd like them. Um, but just same thing, check with your veterinarian and do some research before you use oils on or around your pet just to make sure um, they're safe for them. So I also have a couple of resources listed here. These are two of the books that I love that I use practically daily that I'm constantly looking up when I need to learn something or when I'm trying to find something for someone else. Essential Oils Ancient Medicine and then Essential Oils Made Easy. Those are both on Amazon. Um, you can grab my link there or look them up. Um, to find those. Those are an awesome resource if you're getting started with essential oils so that if you're having, if you want to know something about a specific oil, you can find that in there. And then if you want to know something about a specific condition or concern, you can find that in there. So both books go into just the oils, but then also protocols for certain concerns from everything from acne to depression to headaches to um, knee pain, all kinds of things. So you can look up your condition um, or you can look up the oil to learn more about them. Um, so that is it, kind of very quick um, shot through how to safely and effectively use essential oils. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you. If you have any questions or if you would like to get started with doTERRA essential oils, um, you can grab my information here. I have my email, renewalfitcoach at gmail.com. You can also go directly to my website via the QR code here, or I have it listed here if you want to do a screenshot. If you want to enroll, my enroller ID is right there. When you enroll with me, um, you will get not only your oils, you will also get a free custom roller bottle as well as a free sample. Um, and then you also get access to some great Facebook um, community, a VIP closed group where you can be connected to other people using oils to help get kind of get and share information. There's also really good education going on in these classes or these places, not just from me, um, but from also mentors above me who are really great teachers. Um, and then I will continue to do ongoing education. I also do a welcome call with you um, when you start to make sure that you're comfortable with your oils, you know how to use them. Um, if you would like to be updated about any upcoming classes, because I will continue to do education classes both on essential oils, but also on health and fitness, because that's kind of my primary realm. Um, please send me an email at the email listed here and I will add you to that list. You can also go to renewalfitcoach.com and on my contact page, you can sign up for the e-newsletter there. So either way works and I'll make sure that you get um, any updates about classes that are coming up. So um, thank you so much for watching, um, for joining this. Uh, feel free to share with others to help just kind of educate on how to use these oils safely and effectively. So thanks so much for coming and I will hopefully